Hello and welcome to Module A, VPN on IP Security Suites Concepts. So don't forget to take your notes and submit them when we're done. All right, so um, let's talk about VPN technology. And what is a VPN? Well, here's a definition of it, and this is what I want you to write down. A, v a VPN, it stands for Virtual <coughs> Private Network, is when you have a payload, that's the data, is encrypted and tunneled. Tunneled means re-encapsulate into another packet. And then, uh, so a payload is encrypted and tunneled to keep data confidential as it traverses the internet. That's what really a VPN is, okay? And please write the following down or take a snippet of this. The benefits of having a VPN, the number one benefit is cost saving because you're going over the internet and everybody's connected to the internet. It's virtually a pretty much, I mean, if you take care of it yourself once you set it up, and if you're on you don't need a service provider, you know, it's free. Security, because of the encryption that you have, you can easily easily to expand, scale up, and it's com almost compatible with everything that you all the different types of technologies broadband technologies from cable to DSL to you name it. All right, site to site and remote access are the different two types of VPNs that are most widely used. Uh, you can have clients connect to a specific server, like when you type HTTPS, um, you can have, uh, that will be a client list, connect, type of a connection, or um, you can have a site to site where you can have one branch office connect to another branch office or a branch office connects to a headquarters, right? So, and it can easily be done automatically. You don't have to do anything like that. All right, so um, when it comes to VPNs and managed deployed, you can have the enterprise VPNs and the service provider VPNs. The enterprise VPNs are the ones that you do and you're in control of everything. You can figure the routers, the switches, and uh, so you're in control of your own enterprise managed VPN. If you need to go and use a service provider VPN, they can offer you a layer two or a layer three MPLS connection. That's the most widely used. Um, or you can have the old, good old frame relays, but it's really MPLS nowadays. This is like the, if you go to a service provider, they're gonna either give you a layer two or a layer three MPLS VPN connection. So please write those down, right? Service provider managed VPNs, layer two MPLS, layer two or layer three MPLS. Managed, you can either use a client list, like a remote access, like using SSL, these two, or site to site, you can set up your own right here. We'll be trying, we'll try to do a site to site um, as a class activity, maybe, or a hands on lab class all right so um the client list vpn very easy the you all you need is a web server and you're pretty much it's almost you don't need any client software to connect you all you need is a web browser and you're automatically connected client-based vpn a vpn client software is needed on the pc to allow you to connect all right so whenever you type https you're doing client list connection uh, if you do your own VPN software, like OpenVPN, you can download it, and all of your data is uh, going through a VPN, not only the one that you use HTTPS for. All right, so moving on. SSL. SSL. Um, Okay, so SSL uses the public key infrastructure and digital service to, to authenticate peers. So the socket <coughs> layer encryption gives you, it's limited. Bauer, please take a snippet of this so it makes it a little bit easier so we don't have to write at these. Um, you can use the IP security to set up um, a VPN or you can use the SSL. The SSL is much easier, much quicker. You almost don't need anything except a, a, br a browser to connect you. So all your work is done on the server end. 
and the SS, once you connect to that server, they give you uh, a public key, the certificate, the digital certificate, and uh, your browser will ask for it from the server, keep the certificate with it, and will use the public key in that certificate to communicate with the, with the server on the other end, and the server on the other end has the private key. And, that, and that's how they communicate, right? In IP security, you can set up your own. You get to choose all the different types of authentication methods like we talked about before. Um, they, well, I don't know if we talked about it before or not, but we will talk about it if we, we have not talked about it. But you can set up the authentication methods, the encryption method, the, what do you want to be integrity, all of those wonderful things that you could do. Very, very strong keys that you can use with the encryptions method. Uh, the authentication is also just as strong. Uh, if you want to do site to site, it's probably a good idea to use SS IP security. All right, so that is your um, IP security. Now you have GRE over IPsec. GRE, which stands for, please write the following down. The generic routing encapsulation is a non-secured site-to-site -site VPN tunneling protocol. It packet, its packet can be encapsulated into an IPsec packet to forward it securely over destination VPN. Uh, standard IP security VPNs, non-GRE, can only create secure tunnels for unicast traffic. So here's a typical GRE carrier. Here's the passengers. This is your packet. IP packet, you tunnel it in GRE, and then you encapsulate it into a new PE, uh, into a new IP packet. So um, now this is the passenger protocol. The carrier protocol is GRE, and the transport that's going to transfer you over the internet is a new IP packet. Okay? So that's what tunneling means. So you actually tunneled twice. You took the IP packet, tunneled it in GRE. And now you tunneled this GRE packet into another IPv4 or IPv6 packet. Oh, so by the way, I want you to write these three different types of um, protocols. Passenger protocol, carrier protocol, and transport protocol. This is the terms used to describe the GRE over IP security tunneling protocols. All right, and this is exactly what it looks. You got the IP packet. GRE, and then the IPsec VPN. You get a lot more security that way. All right. So the dynamic, uh, dynamic multi-point VPN, which stands for DMVPN, or also write this down, is a Cisco software solution for building multiple VPNs in an easy, dynamic, and scalable manner. Okay? Um, it uses a hub-and-spoke configuration to establish a full mesh Topology, that's something that is really good to good to have. What else do you need to know? Uh, IPsec virtual tunneling interface. Oh yeah, write this down. The VTI. It simplifies the configuration process required to support multiple sites and remote access. That's a questions, good questions to come up on the exams. All right, now we're, let's go into the. Uh, service provider VPN, VPNs, which is mainly, like we said, the um, MPLS. And the MPLS gives us two types of services. So please write these down. Layer 3 MPLS VPN, which the service provider participates in the customer routing by establishing a peering between the customer routers and the provider's routers. Or you may choose an MPL, a layer two MPLS VPN, where the service provider is not involved in the customer routing. Instead, the customer just deploys a virtual private LAN service to emulate the Ethernet multi-access LAN segment over the MPLS network. No routing is involved. This is like almost direct connection. The customer routers effectively belong to the same multi-access network. All right, so now let's get into the IP security. IPsec, all right? So this is what IPsec offers, these four bullet points. So please write those down. Confidentiality, integrity, origin, origin, 
authentication and Diffie Haltman. This is the one that is used to exchange keys. You remember. Well, I don't know if you remember, but here's the IP security. It's a suite of protocols. So you can get to choose uh, do you want authentication header or do you want the ESP or do you want this? And then you get to choose do you I want DES, triple DES, AES, SEAL, depending if, if I want the type of uh, you get to choose which protocol you want for con confidentiality, which integrity protocol for, for integrity, which protocol you want for authentication, and how do you want to transfer your um, your uh, keys over the internet. So that's what the Diffie Hellman is for. All right, so choosing the IP protocol encapsulation is the first building block. So the first building block, with IP security is you get to choose, do you want the authentication header or the encapsulation security he header or both? Okay, so write this down. So that's your first choice. Now, once you choose that, it's going to ultimately decide on the different types of confidentiality, integrity. And if you go back just a little bit here. So if you chose authentication header, there's no confidentiality with that. You don't get a choice. You either get to choose MD5, PSK, you get to choose that, or one of these, or any of the DEF helmet. If you choose ESP, then you get to choose a confident. then your data is going to be encrypted. And then you get to do hashing and authentication and everything else. Or you could do both, right? ESP and HD. So you get to do choose one of those for confidentiality one of those for integrity, one of those for authentication, and one of those for Diffie-Hellman. And by the way, the good thing about IP security suite is this can grow, right? So you can add more. So if there's a new protocol that comes in for authentication, just put it in there, right? And there'll be a choice when you are setting up your VPN. So when you are setting your VPN, you got to choose the IP security protocol first. And then you'll pick out your confidentiality, integrity, authentication, or Diffie Hellman. Okay. So the confidentiality we got the DES, triple DES, AES, and the SEAL, right? The DES gives me 56 bit key, weak. Triple DES, you have three keys, right? Encrypting, decrypting, encrypting again before you send it out. So that's good, right? AES, very strong. You got 128, 192, and 256 bit keys. This is the strongest of all. And now you got the new seal, right? And also very strong, 160 bit keys. For integrity, you got the message digest number five or the security hashing algorithm, right? Mostly we use uh, SA, SHA for, um, for VPN integrity. Then you got the authentication. Do you want pre-shared key? Or do you want, you know, having the same key to both sides? But that's a little bit less secure. But RSA, you're transferring the keys, uh, you know, the public and the and the private key. So RSA is stronger, right? That would be a choice. Or you can use the Diffie Hellman. Diffie Hellman is one to five. These are the old, less secured. The 19, 20, and 21 are much stronger. So please write that down. The Diffie Hellman allows you, allows two peers to establish a shared secret key. They share the um, the symmetric key, if you remember that, right? So you want to choose Diffie Hellman groups 14, 15, and 16. They use larger key, but 19, 20, 21, and 24, uh, they have a smaller key. So you got to use. Don't use the lower, the single digits, use the double digit keys for Diffie Hellman. All right, and that's it for chapter eight. So please write down your, um, all the notes that I asked you and um, submit them and I'll see you on the next video.